Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, a perfect example of how brute force can win points. Now there's more than one way to play and win at pickleball. A player can choose to play a soft game where he will hit a third shot drop. All players are at the non-volley zone and a dinking game ensues. Our players can choose to go with a power game in which they hit the ball as hard as they possibly can, hoping to get the point over as quickly as possible. Or they can choose to use a combination of both. In this game, one team chooses power over finesse and for the most part, their opponents cannot handle it. These players are at the 50 plus age group and one player hits the ball just about as hard as I have ever seen any player in this age group hit it. A big thank you to the YouTube channel Jeet Kuhn for posting this video. Let's go. Here are the players. They do not say who is who. So in the far court, the guy in the gray shirt, the player in white, in the near court, the player in blue, and the player in maroon. Let's go. Here's the first serve. Can he get up to the non-volley zone? No, he cannot. And there's an unforced error made right into the net. If you notice, the team in the far court had the team in the near court pinned just beyond the baseline. They really should have won that point, but he unfortunately made the error right into the net. Maybe just getting warmed up, as that was the very first point of the game. Here comes the third shot. Nice drop into the kitchen. Nice backhand flick, and that backhand flick was just a little bit too strong. So, two unforced errors to start the game. I'm sure they're going to clean it up. All right, there was a third shot drive that the player in gray could just not handle. Let's see maybe why that happened. All right, so if you notice what happened here, I'm going to back it up one more time. Here's a return. It's a good return. It is deep, but when he gets to the non-volley zone, his feet are not totally set, and he's kind of having to hit this when he really wasn't ready for it. He was not set. His paddle was not out in front of him, and he had to hit that ball by moving his paddle to where the ball was, whereas if he would have been in position and all set, he just wasn't quite ready for it, could not get his paddle up in time to get that ball over the net. Plus, that ball was hit very, very hard. I talked about overpowering, and the team in the far court is the team that has most of the power in this game. There you go again. Hit it really, really hard right at the guy in the gray shirt, and he just could not get to it. The guy uh, in the back court just did an excellent job of hitting it to the guy's right hip, and again, he could not get the ball back over the net. Third shot drive again, fifth shot drive, just perfect shot right down the middle of the court. Sometimes you got to keep your eyes open to see if the middle of the court is open. And in that situation, it was, and he just hit a perfect shot. Just great play by the guy in the back court. I think that is worth reviewing again because watch everything that he does right first of all it's a very very good serve it has some side spin on it and it, it is kind of curving to this player's left which makes him hit a backhand shot here now watch how powerful this two-handed backhand is here it come he comes he is loading up boom right here the guy in the blue shirt was able to get to it the guy in the backcourt on that return was hoping for a shake and bake, and he almost got it. Watch the fish shot here. Another very powerful shot. The guy in maroon can get it back. Now, look at the difference. 
Two very hard drives, but a seventh shot reset right into the kitchen. So the guy in gray in the backcourt just has just about every shot a player needs to be successful in pickleball. Another drive, backhand, just fantastic play by the guy in gray in the backcourt. It's like the team in the near court does not know what is coming. Is he going to hit it as hard as he can, or is he going to hit a drop or reset into the kitchen? There we go. There's a shake and bake right there. Unfortunately, he hit it out, but the guy in white got exactly what he had hoped for. The third shot was very, very forceful, and all the guy in the blue shirt could do was pop it up because, again, he was not totally set. He just is not getting to the non-volley zone in time. So that was the shake. Here comes the bake right here. Just perfect. Unfortunately, his partner hit it out of the court. Perfect strategy. Just not the greatest execution on that backhand. And the guy in gray knows it. Another third shot backhand drive with just a tremendous amount of power and the player in the maroon shirt just cannot handle it why can he not handle it let's go watch again here he comes again he was not set he just did not get up front quick enough he's got to do a better job than that now, he may not have been able to handle it even if he was set because the guy in Gray's third shot was just so powerful. Let's see what happens this time. Okay, nice, deep return. Is he going to hit a third shot drive or a third shot drop? He goes for the drop this time, almost makes it, fifth shot. Look how good that is. Backhand, fifth shot, right into the kitchen. Absolutely perfect. Hit it to the player in Maroon's backhand. Oh, he got lucky with the roll of the tape. Very fortunate that that ball went over the net. Just a bad break for the team in the far court. Cannot get the third shot drop into the kitchen. Nice try, but he just missed it. Got it that time. Goodbye. 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 Put it away. Yep. Could not reset it. And if you cannot reset the ball into the kitchen and move forward and you were caught at the back of the court, your chances of winning the point are very slim. Nice job by the team in the far court, keeping the players in the near court back. Third shot. Well, he hit it into the net. I think there's a possibility that ball would have been going out, but he hit it anyway. It might have landed in, but I think it would have been very close. Goodbye. Shake and bake again, and I just got to tell you, the guy in the gray shirt in the far court hits the ball just about as hard as anyone I have ever seen hit it. That was a perfect execution on the shake and bake. Let's watch it one more time. Here comes the shake. Boom. Here comes the bake. His partner put it away. I mean, you just cannot do a better job than that. The problem is the team in the near court is just not able to handle the third shot drives by the team in the far court. They are just being overpowered. And there's a ball that rolls into the court, so they'll do the serve over. He hits the ball so hard. Right at him, a body shot. I think the score right now, they're changing sides. I think it's maybe eight to one. Third shot. Just too powerful. I mean, these guys are fantastic. I don't think I'd want to play against these guys. They might break my paddle. That has happened. I was playing against a banger and he broke my paddle. So. I think these guys are hitting it harder than that guy did. Can't even get the serve back over. I don't know if they're uh, just uh, not going to say giving up, but the team in the near court now is just overpowering them. Look at this shot. And then he has the touch right there, the touch again. Goodbye. 
Goodbye. Come on, put it away. You've had three chances. That was a nice point. That should have been the team in the near court's point. They just couldn't put it away. So nice job by the guys in the far court keeping the ball alive and uh, getting the team in the near court to make the unforced error. Look at this. Just a great backhand flick. Nice play by all four players. I was really impressed with the way the team in the far court was able to handle three of those tremendous backhand drives by the guy in gray. They were able to get them back over the net. But uh, that backhand flick to end the point was just great. The score now is 11 to 1. Oh, and that ball just was barely hit out on the serve. But if you saw how much spin that ball had on it when it hit the court, it really bounced to the right. So again, the guy in gray is just a great player. The player in the right actually was not set. So the player on the left side of the court with a pickle shirt on decided to take this ball with his forehand because he is set. Nice job there. And the ball is in. Nice third shot. Nice get. Again, some very nice gets by the team in the far court, but just popped up too high. And when that happens, the team in the near court is just too strong, too good. They're not going to miss that shot. They're going to put it away. And that's exactly what they did. Third shot drive, he's ready for it. And now the team in the back court cannot get to the net. Goodbye. The team in the near court has every shot. They've got to be, I'm going to say, 5.0. Oh, he went with a third shot drop instead of a third shot drive. And it hit the top of the tape and rolled in. Unfortunate for the team in the near court. 11-2-2. That's strong. Look at that. The first backhand was very powerful. The second backhand had touch and it fell into the kitchen. Just great overall skill by the players in the near court. And there's another serve that the team in the far court cannot get back, giving a free point to the team in white and gray. That's just a tremendous amount of power. Now, CAPA stands for California Pickleball Association. I'm not surprised that this is in California because they have some great players in California. The level of play there is just higher than it is in most other areas of the country, and you're seeing why. He was ready for the third shot drive, got it back, and the guy in maroon just could not get the fourth shot back. Oh, nice job. Missed it. So I think they now have another point, scores something like 13 to 3. At the roll of the tape again. The ball comes into the court, so they'll do it over. Watch that shot. Flick right at his feet. That's not easy to do. It's really not easy to hit it that much of a downward motion. But great job. Wow, I got the roll of the tape again. <laughs> If that wouldn't happen a couple of times, the team in the forecourt may only have one point. I mean, they've got a couple of points because the ball hit the tape and the other team was not able to handle it. That's over. 
That's really the first big mistake as far as for hitting the ball high that the team in the near court has made. Nope. They cannot move up. Oh, nice job. Goodbye. Just too easy for players with the ability the players in the near court have. Got to keep the ball low in pickleball or that's going to happen to you. Third shot drive, just waiting for it. Nice reset into the kitchen. And the unforced error right into the net. One more point, and the team in the near court will win this game. I think the score will be 15-3. to three. Let's see if they can end it right here. Oh, going with a lob. Look at the power on that shot. Then a nice touch there. And into the net, and the game is over. Just high-level, fantastic play by the team in the near court. So there you have it. Admit it. You've got to be impressed with how powerful and effective the winning team hit the ball. The winning team had their opponents guessing what was coming next. They just couldn't handle it, and in the end, they got crushed. Again, a great job by the winning team. One of the best 50-plus teams I have ever seen play. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I really do hope you learned something from watching this video. And if you did, I hope you take the time to like and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. That's it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the court.